Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Ben. I am a runner who is also a running coach that specializes in strength and conditioning, epigenetics, which just means how your genes express in different environments, plant-based nutrition, and I am taking on mobility as well because it's such an important aspect of when it comes to being a healthy runner. And my philosophy is, if you are healthy, you will perform well. If you are unhealthy, you will underperform. So what I'm gonna take you through today is a workout that I've been doing um, for the last four weeks. Currently, I'm four weeks into my training cycle. I've got three cycles left before my race. So everything is moving in the right direction. And when it comes to my training, when it comes to leading up to a race, there are some things that I do change. Right, so what my training program focuses on is in helping to improve your mobility, which is just strength and flexibility combined. In particular, it's gonna be hitting the areas such as the hips, the calves, the ankles as well. Uh, areas that runners tend to suffer from when it comes to injuries. As I said, body weight base as well, so it's not too much load, which is gonna allow me to increase my running time without having to overtrain as well. So I'll go through the exercises, and as I'm doing the exercises, there'll be a description of each of these things. If you do find this video helpful, it would be awesome if you could click the like and subscribe button. Also, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, my email is in the description below. But apart from that, let's get into the workout. So the first exercise that I'm gonna be doing is the sled pull. So this is part of the warm-up. And the sled pull is such an amazing exercise because not only is it going to get the heart rate up, it helps to warm up the areas which is going to help improve my ability to squat, which is what I'm going to be doing later. So some of the areas this will help to engage is it's going to help to open out the ankles, in particular dorsiflexion, and that's your ability to get your knee over your toe. It's also going to warm up at the bottom of your feet as well, so it's going to get your toes moving, which is really important and often neglected when it comes to runners. And anyone who's suffering from plantar fasciitis will understand what this is, so really good exercise for that. Also, your knee is going over your toe, so it's going to help improve the flexion of your knee. And it's also going to put a lot of emphasis on the quads. In particular, there's a muscle known as the VMO. That VMO muscle is so vital when it comes to improving knee health. If that muscle is working, you are increasing the likelihood of having a more stable knee and decreasing the likelihood of having runner's knee. So it's doing all these things. Also, it's going to get the glutes firing as well alongside with the hamstrings. And because I'm pulling it with, this, with uh, TRX bands it's also engaging my back so it's helping to get in between my shoulder blades working so it's going to help improve posture so fantastic exercise to do now depending on your injury history I would start off with just walking backwards however the aim is you want to be trying to add as much load as you can onto that and still be able to move the sled comfortably um, and also for runners, we spend a lot of time running forward. How much time do you spend running backwards? So doing this is also going to allow you to increase a movement that we don't do and can't come deficient in. And we're designed to move uh, like 360 degrees. So always try to think about that when you're doing your training. So when I do this, I'll do it for no more than five minutes. And that's enough time to get a good sweat on, get all the muscles activated and loosened off for when it comes to the next part of the workout. Right, so the second exercise is known as a tib anterior raise or just lifting your toes up. Great exercise to help work on the front shin muscle, a muscle that's often neglected and something that tends to affect runners if you're suffering from shin splints. So really good muscle to improve and yet again this is going to help improve knee stability. So all you need to do is to get your legs as straight as you can and lift your toes up and I go for around 25 reps. Now the further you are away from the wall, the harder it becomes, the closer to the wall, the easier. But in for 25 reps, you should feel a pretty good burn. And as I say, it's a fantastic exercise to do, not only when you're at the gym, but before running as well, because that's going to help decrease the likelihood of getting shin splints or mus muscle injuries around the front of the leg. So the third exercise is the good old calf raise. This is the ultimate runner exercise. Anyone who's had any calf injuries or Achilles issues know this exercise very well. Yet again, it's stable in the program. So all I'm doing is I've got some weight plates to elevate and I'm going to be up and going up and down, keep my legs as straight as I can. And that's really going to be hitting known as the gastrocnemius or the top calf muscle. So the stronger that muscle is, the healthier I will be. And it's a really good exercise. Yet again, that you can do 
on exercise training days or when you're warming up. Highly recommend doing them for both, but a really good exercise. And if you want to make this harder, you can go single legs or you can add weight as well, which is going to add more resistance. Next exercise is the elevated Patrick step. So as you can see, I've got a dumbbell underneath my heel. And the reason for that is to take the pressure away from my Achilles and my soleus or so the calf muscle. And by doing that, it's gonna put more focus on my thigh muscles are known as the BMO. I've talked about this muscle a lot. The stronger that muscle, the safer your knee is gonna be. So look, make sure you're incorporating this if you want to prevent runner's knee or if you've got runner's knee and you're trying to improve um, the strength around there. I've got it on an elevated surface, however, I would strongly recommend just starting on the floor and then looking to put plates or whatever you can underneath to build more resistance, around 25 reps on each side, and please take your time. So the next exercise and the main exercise of my routine is the AHE, ATG split squat. This exercise opens up the hip big time, especially on that back leg, and it's also helping to strengthen the front leg and improve ankle dorsiflexion, so that just means your ability to get your knee over your toe. Now, depending on your flexibility level will determine how high you need to put the plates underneath the front leg. Um, you can say I've got three plates. The aim for me by the end of this year is to have no plates. A couple of things, try, try to keep your back leg as straight as you can, keep your body nice and upright. And the great thing about this exercise, it's a single leg exercise, which means that you're helping to improve each side to be equal. When you're doing squats, the likelihood is if you're using both legs at the same time, you're gonna favor one more than the other. I aim for 25 reps and give myself short rests in between. Next exercise, very other bands exercise. I wouldn't suggest doing this if you're not new to the gym. This is known as the Nordic Curl. I am starting this at a beginning progression, so you can see I'm keeping around a 90 degree angle from my, from my knees and letting my body fall forward and come back up. This is great though for the hamstrings. If you're looking to and get faster and improve your hamstring strength and flexibility, Nordic Curls are the way to go. However, be careful when doing this one. I'll probably start off doing some um, hip raises or some hamstring curls on a Swiss ball before doing this exercise. This is definitely more of an advanced exercise. However, I'll do five reps, give myself short rests and I'll aim for 25, but no, this is really gonna hit the hamstrings and get them glutes firing. All right guys, so the first stretch I'm showing you here is the hip flexor stretch. Really good one to help open up the hips, but also release the lower back if you are suffering from back pain. Just try and get your body as close as you can to the wall and then from there trying to keep your body as upright as possible if you need to put something underneath your knee to help ease the pain or hold on to something feel free to and the challenge is to be at the hip the back of your head off the wall and then eventually the shoulders and aim to hold this for around a minute and a half if possible so the final stretch to finish off with is the glute stretch so you just lie on the floor and then from there you just cross one leg over the other and the whole purpose of lying on the floor is to keep your spine in neutral and from here you're trying to push your bum down to the floor and that's going to be a really good stretch to open out the deep muscles in the glutes so the piriformis and the glute mean and max so all you do is hold here for around a minute and a half and then you would switch and do the other side and that would be the end of the workout there <laughs>